an amateur has an expectation of not being paid. I think an amateur is, is an individual who is learning their, their, their craft, their skill, to become a professional elite performer. Simply, an amateur is someone who doesn't get paid for what they're doing, their work. When a high school student is visited by a college coach right. sitting in the living room, the school is going to take care of my college expenses as an education. That's the agreement that the student amateur athlete has with the university or college. No, to me there's no such thing as a student athlete, especially when you're working upwards of 40 hours a week or more at your sport. Um, I don't know about you, but I probably would have a rough time graduating from college if I was working some job for 40 plus hours per week. A student athlete to me would be someone actually that could actually go to school when they're not playing the sport. Let's say they could configure the semesters so that during the off season, maybe you could really front load or back load the person's curriculum so that they wouldn't even have to think about studying when they're playing. Actually, I just prefer there be some sort of a payment or compensation system whereby an athlete becomes an ambassador or a marketer for a school. But if unionization is a step towards that, then uh, I'm in favor of that ruling. Once you sign that letter of intent, you better play football because your football is tied to that scholarship. Exactly. If an employer has access to you at hours that they choose, you have to show up and then you are paid for a benefit to that employer, you are now an employee. The NCAA created a fiction called the student athlete after they had to pay a workers' comp claim in the 50s. Right, right. And in response to that, they decided to protect themselves. And everyone was naive about it. Mm -hmm. There was a young man that was just uh, signed a letter of intent to attend the Ohio State University. And I looked at the young man, and I looked at his mother, and I said to myself, he just saved his mother possibly $250,000 to get an education. The only true amateur athlete, the only true student athlete is somebody on intramural mm -hmm. or someone who walked on in an uncompensated manner. It is a privilege for a university to take someone's talent and not pay them the market value for their services. Because it's not a privilege, it's an exchange. But when this whole labor thing breaks through, this case would be more important because now this fights for the right for them to be paid millions of dollars. You think it's going to go to that <laughs> level? Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, Northwestern, gonna... Northwestern yes. who's not a football school, right. over the last 10 years made $235 million, million dollars. in revenue. Yes. Sure. We're not talking about a Texas that made $181 million in revenue in one year. Right, right. It has its own network. Right. That's why it's going to be very, very difficult for this thing to take off because, again, we make the, you know, the, the, the comparison when you take a Northwestern and you compare it to Northern Illinois and you compare it to the Alabamas, right. you know, and then you compare it to the, the, the Notre Dames. You're talking about boosters who are already involved. Yeah. Now agents yeah. who are coming in, yeah. chancellors and yeah. presidents yeah. negotiating deals. Great to get the best guy out there, okay? Why? To get the television contracts yeah. and to get the, the, the shoe contracts and whatever else there is. So the NCAA is simply not going to just sit back and let this thing happen. They're not. They're too, you have too many smart and powerful individuals representing this NCAA group. Unfortunately, the member institutions are stronger than the NCAA itself. I'm looking at perhaps obsolescence of the NCAA, meaning an idea whose time has come and passed. It's happening in pro sports already, where they're trying to regionalize the division. The conferences, yeah. Right? The NCAA will eventually follow the same pattern that the NFL is trying to, to incorporate and, and the, NF, the NBA as well, okay? All, all the major sports. So, yeah, it may not be called the NCAA when, when the dust clears. There's still going to be a governing body that the institutes are going to have to address. Oh, they all should get a, a part of their jersey. I mean, if you can't buy a hamburger and your jersey's on sale in the bookstore. Chris Weber said he walked into the bookstore 
jersey hanging on a rack for 100 bucks right. with his name on the back. Right. Couldn't get anything to eat. Right. Chris Webber said, I got a talent, I got a skill. I'm taking my skill to the next level, the professional ranks, so that I can make, I can make money for me and take care of me. And so that, that yep. year that he spent in, in, at Michigan to get his college education catapulted him to professionalism to earn money for himself and to provide for himself and take care of himself. That jersey so they, in that bookstore <laughs> was money he could have had too. <laughs> In the meantime. But how many, you, un you understand, there are only a handful of players that are, are producing or help generating that revenue for whatever university or whatever s school. That's, it's, that's, how can there, that's how all can relative, there be, man. That's all well, relative. Xavier, so let me be clear. Yeah. What you're saying is the scholarship is compensation, but it's under compensation. Well, that's, well, the, so, so it's compensation as it relates to a labor law perspective. Yes. It's too little compensation as it relates to an antitrust perspective because schools get together and they come together with the NCAA and say, you can't be paid more than what your tuition scholarship is. Those guys, they were living a life, all right? Yeah. Every Thursday night, they get steak dinners, right? I had to fend for myself and get a gear on and, and, you know, a beverage for my dinner. And let's not even talk about the benefits that come with being a, 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 an athlete, especially on a major campus, major university. I mean, all the perks that you get aside from the scholarships and... and Riles, Jerry, relatively speaking, though, yes. those are trinkets in the big picture. Sure it is, right? We brought up Michael Jordan before. Had Michael Jordan, in my opinion, not had taken the course of, of going to, to North Carolina and getting his education would not be the, the world icon that he is, okay? Just my opinion. You guys can throw at me LeBron James. LeBron James is a, you know, he's a freak of nature, okay? He's, a, he's an athlete that comes once in a, in a lifetime, but LeBron yes. James saw his value and knew what he was capable of doing, okay? So he was able to take his skills from high school to the professional ranks. That's why all people go to school, to get more education, to find a job, to take care of themselves. That's, that's what the other student body does. Yeah. They go to school that's what they go to for. edit education and go to college. The NLRB, I go back to the ruling, stated that the sole purpose of most of these guys is not to go to class, it's to play football. You go to school to play football. I'm getting to the big picture of the NCAA becoming obsolete or maybe even the dissolution of the NCAA. They're that silent partner that benefits from the labor and, and, and hopes and dreams of impoverished boys. I think this is ironic when it comes to boosters and ineligibility of college players. You can't accept something for nothing because you're being paid something for nothing. <laughs> I think it's incredible. In other words, uh, hey, we, in other words, pimp. Right. You can't. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> I mean, pimp. I mean, the concept is amazing. Of course, you're going to do that. Of course, you're going to make sure that they're not getting any money. Oh, this is our money. Wow. You can't see it. You can't get any money from anyone else. Come on. The Division One athlete, especially, should be paid because that person is not a student athlete. That person is an employee. The person is being compensated, and moreover, the person works so many hours per week, almost precluding them becoming any kind of uh, decent student, certainly not an honor roll student, certainly not on the level of people that come to college just to study. The child is there to study, to get the best grades possible, then to move on to either grad school or some kind of business or a good job. That person is a student, okay? The student athlete, so to speak, which is a misnomer, that he is not there for that same reason. Very few, I mean, some of them already have a, the foundation of a better education and they are able to work the system. That's not the norm. The average athlete is poor, generally black, 
and, and, and has pretty much a substandard education in the formative years. Some of them do not even know how to read. Uh, pay that kid, make that kid an ambassador of the school and a marketer, if you will, someone who increases the popularity of a school, someone who brings in uh, an audience, someone who makes people proud of their alma mater and, and pay him accordingly. He's not a student athlete, he's an employee. I think that uh, athletes should be paid. And uh, the reason why is because of basic labor law. They are already given um, compensation in the form of grant and aid scholarships. Uh, and they are being told what to do, where to do, and how to do it. And so when you put it all together, athletes should be able to take advantage of their name, likeness, and image. They should be able to collectively bargaining for their rights. They should be able to be uh, actively involved in their health care and safety of their particular sport. Totally disagree. I think that the, uh, the, the players, the student athletes are already being uh, compensated for. Um, I think these uh, student athletes, um, again, it's their choice, it's their decision if this is what they want to do to, to, to better their, their lives. They're getting a, an opportunity to, to get a better education. Sure, they have to uh, invest um, their time in, in honing their skills, but they're also positioning themselves to better themselves after college to have a, a, a better life. Let's not fool ourselves and think that everyone who attends college should be in college. There are other individuals who, who can. They, they handle the workload, maybe have two double majors, and graduate early. They immediately get the benefits of you on the field. When you get on the field and the talent players at Auburn get on the field, those great guys, the return on investment is a national championship. But they can get the prestige from a great athlete as well. But at the same time, they're not getting money. With the athlete, they get the money and the bragging rights. The athlete is getting them that prestige and income right now. That's called an illegal profession, is that you're getting a benefit after the fact. That's not something you bargain for at the time of exchange. Right. Same thing with the, the, the academic student. Because during their four years with that academic scholarship, you can bet believe they're going to be used as recruiters to what? Draw in more high school students who can reach that academic level, which means what? The university, the college, the school is benefiting from their services. The year the Boston College um, quarterback Doug Flutie won the Heisman Trophy, okay? The nation's outstanding football player, Boston College's undergraduate admissions increased by 25 points and its average SAT score of admitted freshmen skyrocketed by 110 points. From the prestige of Doug Flutie, as well as the money he's bringing in. With a, with, with a pure academic, they're not bringing in at, at that kind of a clip. Patrick Ewing says it helped generate a 47% increase in undergraduate applications. Patrick Ewing. Right. Now, non academic, mm -hmm. but he brought in academics right. and money to the game. Sure. There's a duality that this, this so called student athlete has to abide by that is very unfair. He can't just, the reason for school is school. But his reason for school, they're, they're making him do something else. They're not making him do something else. He chooses to do something else. Right. Or he can leave. He chooses, right. Athletes, we can call them student athletes, but we'll call them student athletes <laughs> employees. And the reason why I say that is because when they go to class, they're a student. And then when they get on the field, they're athlete employees. And in order for them to get on that field or get on that court, they first must attend class. That's the whole purpose of them being there. Now, individually, if they feel that that's not the reason they're there, that's their personal decision. But the agreement that they made with the university or the college is to come to this school, represent us on the field or on the court, but in order to represent us and maintain that scholarship money that we agreed on, you have to maintain a certain standard, which is a GPA which means you have to go to school, hence student athlete. Athlete ambassadors for the school, they bring in prestige and glory to a given school, but also the word concubine comes to mind as well. They've been pimped out. <laughs>